Hi guys, I'm Annabelle and welcome to Beeple Village. Today we are going to be doing a full run through of Funkoverse, specifically the Alice uh, in Wonderland set because Nicole has asked for it. So here it is. Join me at the table and let's play Funkoverse. Okay guys, I have the game ready to go, all set up. Let me show you a little bit of what setup is all about. There's a lot of tokens on the board, so uh, you know there's gonna be a little bit of setup to do. Uh, okay, so uh, this particular board, of course, I, it's supposed to be facing, one of, one of the two groups is supposed to be facing me and one is supposed to be the other player, but since I'm playing solo, I put them on the side so I can kind of see both. Uh, but I have one group of uh, heroes over here, one, one um, team, and then another team on the other side. And for this run through, we're going to have uh, Alice and the Queen, which come from the Alice in Wonderland set, uh, uh, go against the uh, Nightmare Before Christmas <laughs> team, uh, which is from another set. So I've mixed two sets together. I kept it simple uh, because really I'm trying to showcase the uh, Alice in Wonderland, but I figured why not show you how some of the characters in the Nightmare Before Christmas work since I have not done a run through for those. I have done other run throughs. There's a Game of Thrones run through. There's a uh, Wonder Woman and T-Rex and Back to the Future run through. So there's, there's a couple of run throughs in the channel. You can go check those out. Uh, but for this one, we have Team Alice and the Queen of Hearts. I've got their character sheet here and it's great that um, this particular board gives you uh, spots for everything so there's uh, two spots for the characters there's their ability tokens which I always call mana tokens so today I think that I'm finally gonna call them by the right name because I have a prompt to remind me what they're called um, Alice has a pink flamingo mallet uh, in her hand she's holding it right now and these are other tokens uh, right there. So I have uh, her ability status card, uh, which, you know, we'll give to her as, as, as she gains it. And then activation tokens over here, cooldown track. Uh, and that's it for this team. They are going to be the starting player. So I place them uh, on, I place the starting player marker or the active player marker on the white side because they have white stand these uh, white stands off uh, so they're they're the white team and then for the black team uh, with black bases I have my characters under starting area which I'm going to show you once we go over the objectives of this game uh, Mr. Igor starts adjacent to the doctor um, as it's uh, part of his uh, card and I'll show him, I'll show you his card when he gets to activate he has Fog Juice in his hand, which is an item that allows you to start with one extra ability token. So I've done that as well as part of setup. I'll show it to you in a second. Um, and also I got my characters, my activations, and uh, Jack has an ability uh, card that might come into, into play. So status card. So I have it here with the other tokens. Now, let me show you the Fog Juice because that I've already done and we're not going to use that item anymore. Uh, unlike the Mallet, which might come into play uh, later in the game. Let's take a look at those two items and then I'll show you the today's um, scenario, which is runners. So like I said, the Fog Juice is just going to act uh, activate at the beginning of the turn. At the beginning of the game, add one gray ability token to your ability token pool. I've done that. We're ready to go. They start with one extra ability token, which is pretty advantageous if you ask me. And then Alice is holding the pink flamingo mallet, which uh, allows her to do uh, a, a challenge, which in this game is an attack. So move one, attack or challenge three, which means rolling three dice. You'll probably get to see that. And if I use it, it goes on the two of the cooldown track. Today we're playing runners, which uh, we have to do uh, on the tea party map, which is the one that I've set up. So what do we do? Clean cup, clean cup. Move down, move down. There are so many used cups on the table that it is hard to find a clean one to drink from. Search the table for clean cups before your rivals take them all for themselves. And as part of setup, we follow the instructions which uh, on the scenario setup, which we did, and then each player secretly picks a character to be a runner. Both players reveal the runner by placing their character cards on the table at the same time, and place a leader marker, which is a star that matches your base color on your runner's card. So just to show you that real quick, of course, I would have um, picked a character, each team member, each player would have picked a character 
uh, hidden and and then reveal at the same time. But since I'm playing solo, I knew from the get go which ones were going to be the characters that were runners, and I've indicated by putting a little star. So they're the white uh, team. So Alice is our runner, and on this team, uh, Jack is our runner. He's got his star, black star, down here, and you're going to see how that is important when we go to the rules and how to score points. So rules: when a character does an interact action with a point marker place. Uh, so rules. When a character does an interact action with a point marker, place it on the three of that player's cooldown track instead of the four. Usually we put the uh, point markers on cooldown track number four and it takes a little bit longer for them to come out, but here we're going to go down to the three. And then how do we gain points? If your runner interacts with a point marker, gain two points. If your runner's ally, so the other guy, interacts with a point marker, they only gain one point. And if you knock out a rival, gain one point. All right, how do we win? If playing with two characters, which we are, gain six points to win. If not, it will be 10 points. So these are our point markers, A, B, C, D. Obviously, we want to make, uh, we want to get the runners as fast, we want to get the runners to run there as fast as they can, if you see what I'm saying there, uh, because they will get two points. Our allies can pick up those but only for one point. If you knock out somebody, uh, a rival obviously, you'll get a point. Now in this game, knocking somebody out is not as easy as in other, in other games. Uh, you kind of have to kill them twice. Uh, the first time you uh, challenge or attack a character, if you uh, win, if you win the challenge, you get to knock them down. So they'll just lay down. Uh, but then if while they're knocked down, you attack them or challenge them again and you win, then you knock them out and that's when you get a point. So uh, I, think, I feel like it's going to be a race to those victory uh, points and waiting for them to come out and doing it again, rinse and repeat until we have six points. Of course, we can try and kill opponents uh, while we wait for the points to come out, but that's probably what's going to be it. All right, so I think we've got it. Uh, we've got our cooldown tracks. We've got our victory point tokens. Uh, I'm using the Alice uh, tokens just to keep it thematic. We're going to run around the tea table <laughs> and try to get some clean cups. Let's do it. Let's go to gameplay. Okay, so like I said, the Alice team is going to go first and I have a choice between uh, activating Alice or activating the queen first. I think I'm going to activate Alice first, so let's take a look at her different abilities and what she can do during a turn. Alright, so first of all, uh, ignore the kitten. This is just a list of all the basic actions that anybody can take. So we can move up to two squares. We can challenge, which is rolling two dice to challenge or attack, remember, an adjacent rival. We can assist, which means if someone has been knocked down, they're laying down on the mat. Uh, on the board, stand them up, stand up an adjacent ally, interact, which means we can pick up those victory points, sweet victory points, and then rally, which uh, uses two actions to stand up. And here's Alice, she has a follow the white rabbit sta uh, passive ability down here, and she also defends with two dice by the way, which I think most of them do. When Alice becomes exhausted, so uh, this means when she's uh, no longer activated, like after she takes an activation, a full turn. You may place the White Rabbit minion token in a square Alice can see. Then Alice may do a move one towards the White Rabbit. Nice, she moves a little bit more. And then for one ability token, or, or for one yellow ability token placed on the one of the cooldown track, she gets choose a token within three squares that Alice can see and place her adjacent to it. And then grow larger is her challenge. Do a challenge two to each adjacent rival, push each adjacent rival and token one square. And then for a blue on the second space of the cooldown track, grow smaller, move two. This may move Alice through rivals and obstructions. All right, so the first thing she's gonna do is she's going to do a basic move. One, two, just like that. She's heading towards the uh, token. Uh, and that's one of the two actions that she can do. For her second, I think we're going to use Curiouser and Curiouser, which is one of her special abilities, which is something else you can do on your turn. And we're going to have to pay uh, a yellow mana, and it's going to go on the one of the cooldown tracks, so not terrible. Let's take a look at what it says. Choose a token within three squares that Alice can see and place her adjacent to it. And the reason why I'm choosing to do that is I know that I can, I can just use another basic move action and 
uh, move and be adjacent to the token, I won't be able to pick it up because I've already used my two actions that I can use during my turn. But if I follow that, then I choose a token that I can see. I'm going to choose, <laughs> of course, the, the token that's here. I can see it because line of sight in this game is drawn from the center of your square to the center of the square you're trying to see. And if there's no obstructions, no, I want to, like, these walls, no other, uh, no uh, rival figures, then you can you can see it. So she can clearly see the B, and now it's asking us to place her adjacent to it. I could could place her here, that'd be adjacent. But why would I do that when I can place her here? The reason why I want to do that is I want to block this guy from getting to the token. And also, uh, next turn, I'm hoping that I can pick up this token, move two, and then pick up that token at a, in another turn. Um, of course, that's very ambitious of me because everybody's going for those tokens, but you've got to try, okay? And now uh, she's done her two actions. One was to move, one was to use her special ability that uh, got her closer to the token, so she is exhausted. But remember, when she is exhausted, she has a special ability that she can use. So let's take a look at it once again, and let's see if we, we want to use it. And her ability is down here, follow the white rabbit. When Alice becomes exhausted, which she just did, you may place the White Rabbit minion token in a square Alice can see. Then Alice may do a move one towards the White Rabbit. So we may do this. It says you may place the White Rabbit and then um, Alice can move one. Uh, Alice may do a move action. Um, I guess this is considered another token and I know these guys have things that can actually... Actually, this guy has an ability that can make tokens fight you. Uh, so I don't know that I want to move Alice. So I don't know that I want to put the, the bunny somewhere. It'd have to be somewhere where uh, she can see. So she can't see him here because yeah, the, the wall is blocking her view. Um, which will only make her move here. Yeah, I don't know that I want to. I think I'm going to hold on to the to the bunny <laughs> and maybe use it. I shouldn't call the bunny, right? That's probably rude to the rabbit. I don't know. Is that rude to call the rabbit a bunny? <laughs> so cute. A hair? Okay. You know what? I'm just going to move on with my turn and have uh, the black team go. Now, this is our runner, Jack, so we probably want to get to that token. One, two, three. Unfortunately, he's far unless he has an ability that can make him go faster. Let's take a look at what he can do. So his passive ability on the bottom, making Christmas on their turn, allied characters within two squares of Jack may use Jack's abilities as though they were printed on their card, which I'm guessing they have to pay for with uh, this color mana. So the first one is a challenge or attack ability. Do a challenge three to each adjacent standing rival. The second one, hail to the Pumpkin King. Move one, give this character the Pumpkin King status card. And then the last one is a blue on number two. What's this? Move two, choose a standing ally or rival this character can see and pull them one square. So the first thing I'm going to head to the point, so that's a move uh, two action. But for my second action, I'm going to use a special ability uh, because I only need to move one more and my Hail to the Pumpkin King will let me do that. So I'm going to show it to you once again uh, and now I'm going to show you the, the Pumpkin status card which I'm going to gain. So I have to pay one to uh, one yellow, so, uh, one, or a yellow to the one space on the cooldown track. And then hail to the Pumpkin King, move one, give this character the Pumpkin King status card, which says, when this character does an ability, you may discard this status card to decrease the cost of that ability by two. So for example, this one, instead of uh, putting it on the cooldown on level three, we'll put it down to level one because it's decreased by two. And this one would actually, what, this will be free? <laughs> I would guess this one would be free too. So he can attack, like do a, do a basic challenge, um, or he can uh, use the card and then pay a little bit less, like pay a little, a little less for that. Um, but we'll worry about that later. He does have it now, so he, he's the Pumpkin King right now. Uh, and that will allow him to move one, which like I said, it's all I need. Now I'm next to the point marker, so next turn I can pick it up. And with that, I am exhausted. He doesn't get, oops, I'm exhausted, wrong guy. Uh, he doesn't get any cool abilities like she does when she's, once she's exhausted. So that's it for him. We're moving to the queen. Let me show you the, her majesty. All right, we'll start on the top with her for uh, the cooldown number three, red challenge four. That's crazy. If the queen is angry, decrease this ability cost by two. So it would only cost her one. Oh, wow, that's crazy. 
All right, all ways are my ways. Move one, an ally doesn't move two. Then if the queen is angry, they do a challenge two. Uh, and then here, Imperial Majesty, choose a rival or token the queen can see within two squares. Move them two squares. Wow, okay, I think we might use that one. And get to the part where I lose my temper. At the start of the game, give the queen the temper status card. After a... Uh, Oh, so she does start with it. At the start of the game, give the queen the temper status card. After a rival the queen can see, does an interact or assist. Place the temper status card on the two of your cooldown track and do a basic move or challenge. So here's the uh, temper. While the temper status card is on your cooldown track, the queen is angry. All right. So she has it at the beginning of the game, but then she's only angry when it's on the cooldown track. Interesting. And if she sees anybody doing an interact action, like Jack's going to do an interact action next turn, or, or she thinks she, he will, right, because he's next to the, to the point marker, then um, we, we can trigger the uh, get to the part when I lose my temper, and it says after the rival, uh, after a rival, the queen can see, interacts, or assists. You place the temper status card, card on, the, on the two, and then she can either move or challenge. So that, that's how we make her angry. She has to see somebody picking something up. She's like, what are you doing? <laughs> and then she's not angry for a long time because it'll go on the two of the cooldown track. So it'll only last two turns. But uh, two turns is better than no turns. Um, but in the meantime, what is she going to do? Well, first, she's going to move. I think that's like everybody. everybody's moving, moving because everybody wants to get to the tokens. But now, like I said, there's a, an ability here that I thought was interesting. Her Imperial Majesty... Choose a rival or token. So the victory point is a token. The queen can see. So she can see that one now uh, within two squares. It has to be within two squares, though. And then I was going to move the token so that uh, Jack couldn't get to it. But I don't think she can see it. She is within two squares of this token. But uh, from here to there, she won't be able to see that one of the wall so and this one is, is three spaces away so she has a choice but she really doesn't she could either stand over here like do another move action and prepare to battle for the token or she can move to this uh, next to this one and be ready for next time to pick that one up here's the dilemma here's the thing uh, she knows that she's gonna be exhausted there are no more uh, turns for her team um, and then uh, these guys are going to go. But then what's going to happen is the active player marker is going to go over to them and they're going to be first. So Jack is technically, or actually really, going to activate before she is going to activate. So if she stands here and just stares at the token, Jack's going to pick it up. Um, and then Jack might even come and try to snag the other one. So I think the better the better idea is to just, oops, she can't move like that. She has to move diagonal, uh, is to just come here and uh, just claim that token next turn. So she did two basic move actions, not super exciting, but the first turns never are, right? Okay, and then uh, we have one more guy that you guys need to see, and then we um, are going to activate him and then uh, do the end of the turn, and you've seen a full full round. So down uh, his passive ability, ability, he's a math scientist. At the start of the game, place the Igor minion token adjacent to Dr. Finkelstein, which we did. When Dr. Finkelstein becomes exhausted, Igor does a move two, and they may push an adjacent ally one square. Oh, look at Igor pushing people around. All right, and then Faithful Servant. You may play or move the Igor minion token adjacent to the Doctor. Eager does a non-interact basic action. So it's non-interact, so he cannot pick up those victory points, but he can fight. And then it's alive. Choose a token or marker within two squares of Dr. Finkelstein. It does a range two, challenge three. An attack of three, that's not bad. And then brain scratch, move two, shift two things on your cooldown track, down one. Okay, so first, just like everyone else, he's going to move he wants to probably go to this uh, token. Then for his uh, second action, just like everybody else, he's going to also do a special ability. We're going to do a uh, Brain Scratch, which is going to cost him uh, a, a gray on number two. But I kind of like that it, it's going to help me take stuff off the track. 
it makes sense that this uh, mad scientist, you know, is really good at uh, getting those ability tokens back and just being really effective. Move to, which is exactly what I need to be in front of that other token, and shift two things on your cooldown track down one. Okay, so one, two, and um, now we shift two things down one. So this one actually comes all the way out. We get it back. Uh, and then he's going to become exhausted, but when he has an ability when he becomes exhausted, Igor gets to go. When a uh, second line, when Dr. Finkelstein becomes exhausted, Igor does a move two and then may push an adjacent ally one square. Okay, so he's going to move two, one, two, and then he can push an adjacent ally, not a rival, one square. So you know what? Uh, this guy's adjacent. Let's push him on top of the token. Um, just so that, I mean, Alice can get to him anyways, but just so that he's closer to whatever else he wants to do. I'm scared of the queen, though, because she's a big hitter. <laughs> Challenge four, I think? Or Yeah, this is crazy. All right, so we've ended the round. Everybody's been exhausted. Everyone's gone. So now we go to a little bit of cleanup. It's uh, not a big deal in this game. One of the things that happens is everybody gets unexhausted, right? Because we need to use them again. So that's going to happen. And then uh, in turn order, which I don't think matters much, we uh, push down things on the cooldown track down one. So everybody gets their ability tokens back. And then the last thing is that we are going to flip that over to indicate that this team is now the active team and they're going to go first. So like I said, we have first dibs on those uh, victory points. So. Before I do anything, Jack's going to activate and he's going to pick this up because that's two points and two points is two points. Now remember we put it on the number three instead of on the number four like we do in uh, other games. So first two points have been acquired. And we have to get to six. Okay. And then he can do another action. And he's going to do, what's this? Move two. Choose a standing ally or rival this character can see and pull them one square. So if the queen wasn't... Oh, and I have to pay for that. So that's on number two. If the queen wasn't standing right on top of this thing, uh, if she was like, like let's say here, I would try and pull her away from that uh, token. But uh, if I, let's say, move here, I can move two. Or let's say I move here, here. Oops, well, don't go away. Um, and then I, I'm here and I can see her, I, I could pull her one, but one is not enough. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move one, two, and very dangerous place to be right next to the queen. I'm going to I'm gonna admit it. And then I can uh, pull him so that I can um, just move him a little bit and get him away from Alice so that she, I mean, she can still attack him because, well, can she see him? Yeah, I, she can see him, so she can still attack him. Which is, but I think I'm gonna be getting the beat down because the queen is here. Uh, but I think I'm done, and uh, and actually we can we can just use a pumpkin so that this doesn't cost us anything, right? Um, yeah, re reduce the cost of the ability by two, but of course we have to get rid of that. Uh, so now he's exhausted. We've used our pumpkin king that reduced our two cost. To zero, so we did an abil uh, special ability for free. This guys are pretty efficient, I gotta say. And then we're gonna go over here. Uh, let's see. I should probably get my runner to pick up uh, all that stuff. I know he can't act again, so I'm not worried about him. Uh, he's gonna probably pick that up. Maybe come. Uh, he he can't reach us. Although he does have that ability that uh, lets other things attack us. But I think we're gonna do what runners are meant to do. We're gonna interact. Uh, put that there, get our first two, and I think she's coming. She's just gonna go one, two, and be ready. If Dr. Finkelstein doesn't move, she's ready to attack. But that's it. That's all she could do. She interacted and she moved. If she had one more action, she would, well, take the token probably. <laughs> But that's it. And now all we have left is the doctor. So what's he going to do? He's probably, first of all, let's have him interact because a point is a point. So we'll take that. And this has been the uh, the let's get points turn. So they're already halfway through winning the game. These guys are at two points. So, but, you know, anything can happen. And that was just his first action. For his second action, we're going to use it's alive. Choose a token or marker within two squares of 
the doctor. It does a range 2 challenge 3 attack. I know the queen is the only one that hasn't acted this turn, so if I can knock her down, uh, she won't get to act. She'll have to use two actions to get up. So she is standing on a token. <laughs> so um, we can we can just, uh, and let's see, and it says, uh, choose a token that is within two squares. And it is, it is within two squares. Choose a token or marker, yeah. Okay, so it has range two, so the token has range two, but we, she's at, on top of it, so it's range zero pretty much. And it's a challenge three, so finally you're gonna get to see how attacking works. So I got my dice, that is a hit, and that is three hits. So I have to roll either that or that. Let's see. All right, I got three hits. These are uh, misses, because they're blocks. So I got three hits on her. Now the queen, like everyone else, has a defense of two. So she has to defend three incoming hits. Goodness, I'm just dropping everything today. And she defended one. So this is a miss, and uh, this is a block. That's a block, and that's three blocks. So she needed to get that result in order to block my three hits that uh, she has in coming. So I did do it. I did get to knock her down, which is great, because that's going to delay the team a little bit. Uh, and uh, I interacted, and then I did my special ability. Did I pay for it? No, I didn't. It's alive. It goes on the number two. He is exhausted. The only one that has not acted uh, is the queen, but she's knocked down. So the queen is going to have to use the rally action, which uses two actions to stand up. So that's all she can do during her turn. I'm pretty sure the queen is angry now because that's a waste of a turn. <laughs> but it's okay because uh, we know that next turn there will be they will be first. So she'll get to pick up the, the token that, uh, that next turn and then hopefully attack one of these guys, these impudent guys that just knocked her down. If they would have knocked her out, remember it's a point. But... You know, that's harder to do, like I said. Okay, so we're all done. Let's refresh everybody. Let's move things down, the cooldown track. Those points are still there, so there's no more points to be had. So I think the next turn is going to be just uh, trying to knock people out so we can get some points that way because there's only one more point, and, of course, the queen's going to get to it because Alice can't, can she? Uh, I should have used her ability, I forgot, when she got exhausted uh, of placing the, the rabbit. Could have probably done that, but I didn't. So I'm not gonna take it back. But it's, um, it's a lot to remember, let me tell you. But of course, if you're just playing with your two characters or even if you have friends that everybody's controlling one character, it makes things a little bit easier, but it's so easy to forget all these cool abilities that they have, uh, which you know I forgot because I think it would have been beneficial to use the rabbit. I'll try to remember next turn. Okay, so moving on. Uh, there first, let's pick up that thing before someone else does. So the queen is going to interact. It's just one point. That's what I'm saying, that if I would have moved Alice, maybe there was a way that I could have gotten her to the token, so she could have gotten two points instead of the one point we're getting now. But beggars can't be choosers. Here's three points. We're tied. And then I believe the queen is going to attack. I wish the queen was angry, but she's not. So it's going to be on number three. Challenge four, which means we're rolling four dice. If the queen is angry, we would have decreased the cost of this three to uh, minus two, so it would have just been one. But she's rolling four against Jackie. All right, Jack. Let's see if we can knock him down. I think so. <laughs> Look at that. She was really mad. She was taking, like, full revenge on this guy. That is three, four, five, six. Six hits. Incoming hits for Jack who rolls two to defend. Can he defend against six? He would have to roll like a pro. I mean, it could happen if he rolled that. Let's see what he rolls. But he defends nothing. So Jack is knocked down. Revenge is sweet. And that's the end of the Queen's turn. Of course, now we're going to go over here. So I have options uh, because... Uh, I can have uh, Jack waste his two actions to stand up, or I can use one of uh, Dr. Finkelstein's actions to stand him up, to, to uh, rally or assist, I think it's called. Um, let's take a look. Here it is, assist. Stand up and adjacent alley. So I can do that so that Jack can then take his turn instead of having to do what the Queen did, which was use two actions to get up.
In order to do that, I have to move. So I'm thinking of using my brain scratch because it'll allow me to move too. Uh, and then I can move stuff down. So I think we're going to do it. Let me show it to you once again. It's a move two. I have to, I have to put the gray on number two, but I have an extra one. Remember I started with an extra one. Shift two things on your cooldown track down one. So I'm going to move two. Uh, can't stand here. So let's, we'll put Jack like this because one, two, so I can move, uh, I can, this is not a, a corner, so I can move in there. And uh, for my second action, we, oh, and I have to pay for all of that. <laughs> so that goes there, and I can move two things down one. If I move the points, one point's going to show up right here where, where uh, Jack's big head is, the C. And the D is going to show up right here in front of Alice. I don't want that. So I'm going to move this one down. And I'm going to move the C down because we're around the C area. So get that back, which is great. It's like we got the token back. And then for my second action, yes, I will assist and I will stand him up. And now the queen is going to get angry because after arrival, the queen can see doesn't interact or assist. He just didn't assist. Place the temper status card on the two of your cooldown track and do a basic move or a challenge. So the queen is angry and it's going to be angry for a couple of turns. I'm going to put it like that so I know exactly where it's at. I'm trying to put it like this so I can read it. Okay, and uh, she can either move or she can challenge. Now she won't be able to uh, challenge um, using her abilities because she doesn't have any more red mana. Uh, and, it, and it's just a basic basic action so but she can challenge Jack too since she's standing right there and we shall do it maybe we can knock him down again it'll depend on how much we roll this time we're just rolling two and he's rolling two all right we got one hit see if Jack defends and he does he does defend so uh, good try but it, it didn't happen okay so Dr. Finkelstein is done and does something happen at the end of his thing uh no. Uh, no no nothing happens right oh yeah Igor Igor needs to move when this guy is exhausted uh Igor does a move two and then may push an adjacent ally one square one two and I can push him one square which is perfect because I know the points are going to come out I think yeah, right there. So right where he needs to stand. So Eager has actually been most helpful. Thank you, Eager. Okay. Uh, so now we move back to our girls. Alice uh, has a mallet. And I think she's going to go use it. <laughs> so you can see everything. So we're going we're gonna to beat down this, this um, Jack guy. So first, our basic move. One, two. And now she's going to use her pink flamingo mallet. It lets her move one and challenge three and it goes like I said on the two of the cooldown track so she can move one more so I think she will because why not <laughs> I don't know if that's a good idea but we'll we'll do it and then challenge three I'm just saying because he well he doesn't have many attacks so. all right I got two hits let's see if Jack can defend And he does not defend, so he's knocked down once again. Jack goes down. But he's not knocked out, so I don't get any points, and I'm done with my turn because I moved, and then I challenge using my mallet, which is also going to go on uh, number two of the cooldown track. And now Jack is a little alone, and unfortunately he didn't get to take a turn because he needs, well, he's taking a turn, but the, the turn is going to consist of rally, which takes two actions to stand up. And we are done, so we take our tokens of our characters and we push everything down. Plan worked. Here's our C. Uh, everything down, down, down. And these guys are going to go first. And I wish I would have made the doctor the, the runner because he's the one picking everything up. But let's do it. Let's pick this thing up. It's a point. So we are at four. Two more to go. He doesn't have any challenge actions, but he can use other people to attack. So we're going to use Faithful Servant. You may place or move the Igor Minion token adjacent to the Dr. Finkelstein. 
Igor does a non-interact basic action. And like I showed you before, here are the uh, basic actions. So he cannot interact, but guess what? He can challenge and try and hit Alice. So I'm going to put him here adjacent to uh, doc the doctor and attack her with a basic attack of two, which is hard to hit, but let's try. You never know. He got one hit, Alice. Alice in defense. Look at Eager. Okay, so Alice is down. If only, if only we could um, attack back to back, but so far we haven't been able to. So that was this guy, and when he's exhausted, uh, what does this uh, he do? Uh, he can. Igor does a move two, and then may push an adjacent ally one square. Okay, move two. So. But only one square. Where would we move anybody? Do I want to move Jack? No, I want Jack here so he can attack. So I think we're just going to move the doctor. Which way? This way? Uh, points. What points? Let's see. <laughs> Let's think about points. D is coming out and B is coming out. And they're both over here. So we need to get over there. I don't think there's a good way of doing this. We're just going to push him up. I don't know. I, I think there, he's okay where he's at. But let's say we did that just, just to do something, I guess. Okay, so that was Dr. Finkelstein. So now we go back to our girls, and uh, there are no tokens out. But I know B is coming, so I want to be over here. See, I want to be over here. And it's not going to happen unless, one, two, three, four, unless I move, move, and not attack Jack. But why would I not want to attack Jack? Uh, well, maybe because <laughs> uh, my, my challenge mana is, is over here. But I'm angry. I so wish I could use my angry status. And it's it's about, I'm about to be happy again. Or not happy. I don't think she's ever happy. But <laughs> but um, I won't have my status anymore. But I don't have my mana. So, ah, oh well. Oh well. What can we do? We also have to come lift, uh, get this girl up. What am I thinking? I have to uh, get, get Alice up. And Alice is, let me see, over here. So I move one, and then I assist. Oh, geez, that was a waste of a turn. But I have to help my friends, or else she, she won't be able to do anything on her turn. And she is a runner, so I need her to move it, move it towards the B and the D. Okay, so she's done. Now, uh, Jack, and Jack also knows the Bs and the Ds are coming, but the girls are right here. If he can get this girl knocked down, I mean, sweet, because uh, she she's the only one left, and she just got up. So let's do it. Let's see if we can let's see if we can get her. The girls are in for a treat. This is Halloween. Trick or treat. Do a challenge three to each adjacent standing rival. I get to hit them both. Of course, in order for me to use that, they have to be standing. But right now, they're both standing. If I get them, one of them is not going to be standing. But you know, that's a problem for another day. For now. <laughs> Wow, I love it. We're going to do challenge three. Let's see if Jack can roll. Uh, let's go for Alice first. Look at that. That's a seven. I don't think Alice can come back from that because the most she can roll is a three. So, Yep. Okay, so she's down again, which was the original plan. And then I get to go for the queen. And I got two hits on the queen. And the queen defends, and nothing happens to her. So now, uh, of course, I can't use that again because, uh, oh, not against her, because uh, she's not she's not standing anymore. But I could just do a basic action and try to get her the old-fashioned way. Uh, I think I don't think I have any other attacks, so we're just going to go for a basic attack, basic challenge. All right, that's three hits. Can Alice defend? She can't defend. Oh, goodness, Alice. So she is knocked out. We've done it. They've gained another point. Alice, when you knock out a character, goes on the one of your cooldown track, which means, you know, she'll, she'll be back soon. Uh, but will she be back soon enough? These guys are already at five points. So we're almost there. The the Nightmare Before Christmas is just uh, beating on these people. And But he's finished. He did a special ability. 
just up here we pay for it and then a basic uh, challenge action knocking out Alice and uh, these guys are done Alice is over here but she's she's stuck she can't even act so when because she's knocked out she has to just uh, let go of her turn for her turn and um, we are done everybody's exhausted so we unexhaust everyone we pull things down uh, every one of these things coming down. Now let's put things back. Ability token goes there. The D is right here. Alice has to go back to a position in her starting area anywhere she wants. So let's put the token first so I know where I want to go. Think here where she started. She can't get to that just yet. She has her item. Her item is back. She can use that again. And the queen is no longer angry. <laughs> what a shame. Okay. And also we move the token to the white side and they are first. We gotta get some of these things before they do. So luckily, did I place them right? Oh, the C. Why was he waiting for the C? It was the B. Ooh, you didn't plan very well. Oh, no, you knew. You, you knew you had to come this way. All right, so the queen is going to go first because she needs to pick that up. So one, two, and pick this up. One more point. It can stay behind. Uh, there are four. Queen done. And uh, then over here, we only need one more point. <laughs> Well, fortunately, we're far away, and so we won't be able to, I don't know, we'll be able to do all that. So let's see. First, uh, should we get Jack? I think, I think we're going to get this guy moving, Doctor, first. We're going to use our Brain Smash, uh, which is two, but then let's move, let us move uh, two things on the cooldown track down one. And it's also a move two, so I'm moving, 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 and then for my next action, uh, I guess I know the C is coming, so maybe I shouldn't go too far. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't go too far. I'm gonna stay here. Well, I want Jack to pick that up. The A is also coming. And Jack will be right on top of it. So I'm just gonna move here uh, because I can pick the the one that's gonna the A that's gonna pop up next turn. Okay, so I'm done, and then I can move this guy uh, up to two and move and um, push someone one. So I'm pushing him over here so that he can maybe get to that point marker. Uh, we'll see. And now Alice, Alice is next, so she has to move it, move it one, two, and unfortunately she will not get there. But we're going to do the same thing we did the first time we played her. We're going to do Curiouser and, and Curiouser, which is choose a token. Which I don't know if these are considered tokens or just markers, to be honest with you. So I might be cheating with her. But she gets to be placed at Jason, so we're going to put her here just like we did before. I think that should be fine. All right, and she's exhausted. Actually, we can move her one more. But do we want to? I don't think so. But let's, let's just put the white rabbit on the board. I feel like I did miss that one time where I should have used it. Okay, uh, the doctor went. Jack hasn't gone. Jack was pushed by the doctor. I exhausted the wrong guy. All right, Jack. Uh, I don't think he can reach the token. So I could pull the queen with my what's this ability, or I could just move towards the token. One, two. And then from there, I don't, I don't have line of sight. So I can't see the token, so I can't pick it up. So I'm going to have to fight the queen. If I could, then I, I, we would have won. Um, does he have anything that lets him pick it up? I don't think so. So we're going to do the challenge again. This is Halloween, which cost me three, and uh, it's three dice. Let's get that queen. Two hits. Queen defends, and she does defend. Okay. I would have gotten the point anyways because it would have just knocked her down, but it would have been nice to knock her down. Now it's her. Oh, no, she's gone. Okay, everybody's gone. Ooh, okay. I think I think we got this. So we unexhaust everyone. And everything comes down. Okay. 
mana tokens or ability tokens. The A goes right here. The C over there. Ability tokens. And we pass that, and that's what's going to help them win because now it's their turn. So all Jack's got to do is come here, interact, and get two points, which is more than he needs. It's seven out of the six that he needs to actually be victorious. Well, guys, there you have it. That was a full run through of Funkoverse, including the Alice in Wonderland set. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, subscribe to Meeple Village and follow us on Twitter and on Instagram, where we post pictures of your favorite board games, let you know what games are coming next, and keep you engaged. I love to hear your comments there. Also, leave me a comment here. Let me know what other Funkoverse would you like me to play. I'll see you all in the next one. But until then, may you play more games. Whoa.